American fractional paper money. Yeah. People might have wondered, why not have a 50 cent note? Well, in the 1860s and 1870s, that is exactly what happened, as well as other denominations further down. But it all started during the Civil War when coins became rather scarce. People didn't want to spend coins because they couldn't be certain they'd get them back again, the silver or gold in a coin, and even the copper and nickel in the base coins were hard to come by. And so you would have a postage stamp. That is a very reliable picture of a five cent postage stamp, U.S. postage, you say, that uh, with, with Jefferson on it, that would have been in a postage stamp at that time. And one of the things people started doing was getting postage stamps that would always be worth sending a piece of mail at that much value. And there were five cent stamps, and there were 10 cent stamps. 10 cents, you see, has George Washington on it. So you could take those or other denominations of stamps and you'd put them in a little metal container and they would, uh, you could use those as money. As the stamp, you know, they get sticky on the back and you get wet and it's, it's kind of a horrible mess. But if you put each stamp inside a little metal container with a clear mica front, you could see the stamp and then you could use it like a five cent piece or a 10 cent piece or whatever because, you know, the stamp is in there. And, and it's always possible, if you need some postage, you just take the stamp out of one of these things and use it for postage. So that kind of became a sort of de facto money. So Samuel Chase, believe it or not, of the Treasury, came up with an idea. Why not make a postage currency? And you'll see here, it says at the top, postage currency, based on that. So that's what he did, postage currency. And uh, he would also have some more. Same five cent, but you got five of them. And says his postage currency at the top. And then finally, the 50 cent postage currency. So all of these would have the same kinds of things here. Furnished only by assistant treasurers and designated depositories of the U.S., um, receivable for postage stamps at any post office. Because these are not postage stamps themselves, obviously you wouldn't have five on a stamp. You have the 50 cent value by indicating you've got five, that this is the equivalent of five 10 cent postage stamps. But instead of stick them on the back or perforated edges, you actually have a back side. Exchangeable for United States notes by any assistant treasurer or designated U.S. depository in sums not less than $5 payable in payment of all dues to the United States less than $5. So, Act approved July 17, 1862. And in August, these officially came out in 1862. And this was our postal currency denominations, the 5, the 10, the 25, and the 50. Well, in May of 1863, I think the legality or, or value of these things was questionable. So for a while, it kind of was suspended, though they still have their value and retain that, in fact, all the way to this day. Their face value is legal tender. So, but later in 1863... That would be a October, and clear to February of 1867. So these were basically good for the rest of the Civil War. They introduced a new form, which they called the fractional currency. Same denominations. Let's take a look at this. Now, you can see there, uh, it's kind of hard to read. Surrounding the left five is the word fractional, and surrounding the right five is currency. Unfortunately, most of that is inside that circle around uh, George Washington. But it still says that furnished only... Wow, that lettering is hard to read. Uh, treasury and well, postage to the United States. Anyway, this is also receivable for all United States stamps. And... Uh, this is the actual act that authorized these, interestingly enough, 
was still in 18, March of 1863 when they were still being made available. So uh, by May they would stop. Well, the previous one would still be available. So they kind of overlap. So they look very similar and on the back. They also look similar. They've got the number. And uh, they're exchangeable for United States notes. Okay, by the assistant treasurer and designated depositories. And uh, in, what is that? What is that? Well, not payable to uh, three dollars receivable in payment to the United States less than five dollars apparently they're not they wouldn't have to be legal tender for more than five dollars but you might want to exchange them in amounts of three three dollars and I'm not sure why now the different denominations at this size have relatively minor variations you know mostly the numbers in the circles except they also had different colors backs so as you see the ten cent is got a green back. Okay, and amounts not less than that's amounts, okay, that's what that was saying. And then it'd be the twenty-five cents. And uh okay, you see now twenty-five cents, United States fractional currency. This one's got a very interesting red color. And then finally you have the fifty cent. It has this orange color. Pretty cool. So, now those were made and you know, cleared up until 1867. But in 1864, the third kind came out. Now, the third has some unusual story because it also includes a three cent denomination. The lowest denomination actually put in paper form is three cents. So, United States. Three cents. Receivable for all U.S. stamps furnished only by the assistant treasurers and designated depositories of the United States. Fractional currency. Treasury Department. So the act of, so the same act of March 3 had authorized these fractional currencies. And then you have the three cent here. Well, these are only out for a little while because once they came out with the nickel three cent pieces, they stopped with these right away, at least this one denomination. It's also unusual that up until this point, none of these notes had any signatures of any treasurers or registers of the treasurers, and well, nobody was doing secretary of the treasurer. So this third phase, which has this look for everything, the next denomination up is five cents. And you can see these two, though they look the same, and now they have signatures. You can see it's got Colby and Spinner, Colby and Spinner. And this time, on the backs, they are the same except for the color of the ink. So that's kind of cool. So, in fact, a lot of these have minor variations that I'm not drilling into here in this little account. The 10 cent note is this third phase um, yeah, that's there there it is and it just you know, there is a green back I think there are also red backs for those and the 25 cents here 25 cents 25 cents so on all the way around and it's backside this note is exchangeable for United States notes. So interesting that these were actually tied to the United States notes. Instead of, uh, well, some of the other things that would have existed at the time, such as national bank notes or um, gold, well, gold certificates were barely started. Now, when we get to the 50 cent for this period, something kind of interesting happens. We actually have three different styles. I'm not sure the history of that, but as you can see, this one and this one look the same on the front. This one is obviously different on the front with this different design. Instead of the person, it's got this abstract design. The difference with these is that on the back, 
As you can see, these two have very different backs. But they all say 50 cents. They all have the same basic information. This one simply has the same back as the original one of these. So, so there it is. So you actually had three kinds of 50 cent. Anyway, but they are all the 50 cent notes from that era. Now the next era, which extends from 1869 to 1875. Now, at this point, they have stopped not only with the three cent, that was just unique to the last period, but also the five cent. I guess that was deemed too small of an amount of money to be worth bothering with. So they only did the 10 cent and above. So here's a 10 cent note. Now they're starting to really get the look you know, of uh, like the bigger money at the time, except that it's still small. It has the signatures of the register and the treasurer. And now it has a seal. At the time, the seals were red. And the treasury seal is what marked this as now. This is real valid money. Up until then, it's a proof or a sample or a specimen. And it's starting to get more of the look. Now, they still weren't made by... You know, the Treasury's print house, but the National Bank note or other contractees to, for making these things out. So, now this is what's really unusual about this particular period, a 15 cent note. Since there was never a 15 cent coin, it's kind of unusual, really unique, that at this particular time and place and form, this denomination would exist at all. And, you know, again, you've got the seal, you've got the signatures, you've got the, uh, the usual, uh, um, you know, they're all from the Act Approved on March 3rd of 1863, fractional currency. See, they are, call themselves fractional currency. And uh, look at that, it even has a pluribus unum wrapped around this fascus, which seems to be a fairly common symbol. Well, in unity, there's strength. And that was the idea. You have those sticks bound together, and they made a very powerful club. So that symbolized the strength of America, that even though you had all these different states, they had united together. That was one of the things that makes America great, is that the various states, despite their various backgrounds and unique state laws among them, nevertheless together formed a single cohesive nation that could deal with the world as a nation as a whole, rather than just as a bunch of individual states. So this is the back of the 15th cent. Very neat, very unusual. There was a 25 cent, another portrait of George Washington, and all the usual accoutrements. Very lovely piece, though, I think. And on the back side, the same. American banknote. Company, New York, okay, 25, 25, so this is 25 cents. Let's see how this reads here. This note is exchangeable for United States notes, no more talk of postage stamps, by the assistant treasurers and designated depositories of the United States. In sums not less than $3 receivable in payment of all dues to the United States, less than five dollars, except customs. United States notes were specifically excluded from to customs. Also, duties on the uh, interest on the national debt, but they didn't get mentioned that here. Now, like the previous one, we have three different styles of the fifty cent. Probably the most famous one is the one with Abraham Lincoln. These also tend to be the most pricey of any particular type of these. As you can see, sometimes the end of it gets cut off, and actually the end of the next piece is on there. So the size is right, but the alignment isn't. This sort of thing would happen a lot with these small um, paper monies. But there it is, and that's the, one of the three 50 cent styles from this fourth phase. Okay, the second style. There's another one. Ugh. 
you see the fractional currency, United States, 50 cents. <sighs> That's also act approved March 3, 1863. Okay. And again, on this side, oh, it's exchangeable for United States notes. So that's kind of interesting. And then the third style. Now, this was kind of unusual because it has a treasury seal too, and it's green. And in fact, this 50 cent note from this period was the first instance of a treasury seal that was green. There'll be one other shortly thereafter this, which we will see. And then that color does not get seen again until the small size Federal Reserve notes dated 1928, but actually appearing in 1929. So it's kind of a neat thing to see. Finally, there's a fifth and final phase, which went from 1874 to 1876. So the 10 cent, again, we're not doing anything smaller, no 5 cent, no 3 cent. Now, apparently we could see this 10 cent could have the, um, the seal in either of different two different colors. So some of them had the green seal, like the 50, like one of the 50 cent notes of the previous phase, or they could also just have the usual red seal. So again, that's the next place and the last until the federal small size Federal Reserve notes, in which you would actually see a green treasury seal. But the notes are otherwise identical. And you look at the back. One thing that's really noticeable on these, it's in a lot of these others, but some of it seems to be more noticeable, you can see the little fibers in there, red and blue fibers. That was blended into the paper as part of evidence of where these things came from. So, I notice there's a slight difference in the ink. Sometimes we see that even in the Federal Reserve notes of the uh, 1920s and the early 30s, where you'd have the lime or pale green treasury seal on some, and you'd have the darker green on the other. You have these same color variations even here. So that's kind of neat to see these variations, but the style is the same. Okay, once again, there's no 15 cent note, so we proceed directly to the 25 cent note. 25 cents, fractional currency, series of 1874 look at that it's even got a series on it and this one now even identifies the man here robert j walker aha uh -huh, secretary treasurer so allison for the register and spinner for the treasurer now I'll take a look at the back side again you can really see the um, the little red and green fibers. Oh, now this time it's made by the Columbian Bank Note Company, Washington, D.C. So that's kind of neat. Oh, these 25 cents. Look at that. You got these different designs here. You have like a squarish badge here and a pluribus unum. You have a kind of more shield-like badge there. It just says 25 cents surrounding 25 here. And here you just have a 25. So it's kind of interesting how they decorate these things. And then finally, there is a, a 50 note for, cent note from that. And again, you can see here. Hmm. So U.S. 50, 50, 50. Uh, kind of neat how that U and S is kind of over and under at the other U and S. And once again, this actually says who's on here. William H. Crawford. Hmm. And there's Allison and Spinner's signature. There's the treasury seal. Look at that. It's all incorporated in this large design that even tells you it's 50 cents. Series 8 of 1875. Interesting. Wow. So, I wonder why that would be 1875 and the other one's 1874. What does the 10 cents say? Does it say anything? 
Series of 1874. Yeah, well, interesting. So, that's pretty cool. But that's as late as these uh, things ever get. Because in February of 1876, coins had more or less returned to circulation, or were beginning to return anyway, to the point that the um, um, need for these had pretty much disappeared, and they stopped making them and circulating them. And that was the end of a rather fascinating era in uh, U.S. coins, quote-unquote, made of paper. Very unusual paper money. Well, thanks for watching.